Do you like sharks? How about a shark with a touch controlled laser beam? Have sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their head. Today we're going to show you how we did that. Started with a Cduino, which is a Arduino clone that runs at 3.3 volts. Uh, hooks up to this little adapter board, which is a Crystal Fonts 10098. And then to this Crystal Fonts accelerated TFT that supports capacitive touch. The Cduino drives a couple of servos, and then the shark's on there, and inside of it is a 3 watt laser. So let's have a little fun. So we started with the demonstration code for this Crystal Fonts 5 inch touch enable TFT, this guy here, and then we just added a few lines from the servo library. I'll go over the code in detail towards the end of the video. So we started with a demo code that comes with this Crystal Fonts 5 inch touch enabled accelerated TFT, and it just kind of bounces things around, but it does detect a touch, and I'll go over the code later. But basically when it gets a touch, it slews the servos to that point and turns the laser on. So if we touch it in the middle here, laser will come on. And then if we move the shark up, it goes over, move it down, move it over where we want to point the shark and go. And right now the laser's um, in calm mode, and that's about, uh, I think I've had it set to 150 milliamps. But it can be more exciting. So let's crank up that laser. The numbers all go to 11. So now I've basically taken current limiting off on the laser, which um, it'll draw about one and a half amps. And if you go, then you can uh, draw lines, burning that. We cheated just a little bit because we used some thermal paper from a label, but that allows it to not to catch fire and still make a dark line. We used regular old typing paper, it would tend to catch fire. So you can uh, draw whatever crazy shape you want to draw. And it's not such sophisticated software, so if you move really fast, it'll uh, draw less of a line. If you move slow, it'll smoke more. So that's it. Sharks with laser beams. Touch controlled. What else could you want in the world? I feel that my life is now completely fulfilled. All I need is somebody who has some artistic talent to run this thing. All right, so what's more fun than sketching? Of course, we could do some kind of a programmed sequence. So let's take a look at that. So we took some vectors of the Crystal Fonts logo and programmed them into the Cduino. This is real time, this section of the video at the beginning here, it's moving just dot by dot by dot. We tried making the laser move reasonably fast, but the response time of the servo and the slop, the mechanical slop in the system kind of made a mess. So what this does is it, this is time lapsed up really quickly. It takes about 30 minutes to draw the logo. But what this does is it moves the servo, gives time for the pulse of the servo to end, and then turns the laser on for a little few milliseconds, then turns the laser off, then moves the servo again. That's why it looks like some dots. So not exactly, you know, production quality, but gives you an idea of what can be done. Here's how to build the code for that demo. First off, just start at the product page. It's right here. This is a CFAF, F for TFT, 800 pixels, 480, 480 pixels high. E1 is a serial number. Any kind of, uh, any display that you've got, like a CFA 840E series will be compatible with, with any other one like that. One is a revision of this particular display that's shipping today. 050 is the diagonal inches. Uh, S is sunlight readable backlight, C is capacitive touch, and A11 is the code to get this display with this accelerated board on it. It's got the FTDI chip here, capacitive touch screen connector, the TFT connector, and the connector out to the 10098, which is a little adapter board used for debugging. All right, so start with this code right here, this software source, Arduino Eve demo code. That code you can just download the zip file and zip that on your file. We also have it up on GitHub because we're that kind of people. So if you search for the part number on this page you'll see the code that's applicable to that part number. And this is the top one here is the one we're after this Arduino sample code. There's also some uh, BridgeTech sample app too. We took the BridgeTech code 
and we ported it to make sure it works seamlessly with our code. So any that's but that isn't used for this example. I just got sidetracked there. All right, so into the Arduino code, basically just do a clone or download. You can download the zip file, which should be the same as what's on from the Crystal Font site, or you can use the uh, clone functions that get get functions, so you can do pull requests and pushes and all that noise. All right, so now that you got the code in your disk, go ahead and open that up in Arduino. And this is the code rock stock straight from the website, straight from the GitHub repository. And I've already made the changes in here, and they're tagged with servo, so I'm just going to be able to search with, through servo to find the changes. Um, so you include servo.h, that brings in the Arduino server library. We create two inst instances of a servo, and one for pan and one for tilt. I have a these little offsets, you can not worry too much about those, those are just to make the servos aim straight out when we feed 1500 into the into servo.write microseconds. So let's look for the next instance here and this is inside the setup function and the setup function does various things to get the uh, FTDI display all happy but we just at the bottom of that we basically take pin 4 set it to an output output we we'll use that for our laser enable and then just to make sure everything's initialized we'll turn the laser off then you attach the servos which tells the uh, tilt servo object that it's going to use pin 5 and the pan servo is going to use pin 6 and then just kind of for completeness to make sure the libraries in the correct position we write 1500 plus our little offset out there which centers those two servos all right then the only other the there's once we've got these servos initialized here in the setup function the only other things we care about is if there's a touch and if there's not a touch so this code down here is within the uh, within the code that's detected that there's a touch on the FTDI and at that point we simply we want to know what value to write to the servo for the pan that's side to side and the tilt that's uh, up and down so the pan value we start with the X the first X point touched because it's a multi-touch display these the touches come in an array and we scale it by 500 which is how far we let the servo go right to left and we divide that by the width which is the width of the display so the result from of this sub expression here when the when your fingers all the way to the left it'll be um, zero and when it's all the right way to the right it'll be 500 and we need this to go between 1250 and 1750 which is centered on 1500 and so this little equation does all that for us there's also a sign change in here so the servo I think the way the mechanics work out with the servo higher numbers are to the left instead of higher numbers to the right same thing for the tilt um, exactly the same except you've got LCD height in and the Y points so once you've got those two numbers calculated you simply write those out to write microseconds and the pan value plus that offset and right microseconds to the tilt plus the offset into the pan and tilt servos then we uh, wait a little bit allow the servo to get going on its way and then we turn the laser on the servo will not have completely got to where it's going in this 10 milliseconds um, but this major loop that we're in here runs every runs 60 times 60 Hertz which is like 16 milliseconds so we can't wait much longer than 10 um, we could get more complicated and like count how many times it's been through the loop before we turn the laser on but we'll just turn the laser on so the laser will be on and it'll start to slew um, one thing that is notable on these servos is that the PWM that goes out to the servo repeats every 20 milliseconds so if you don't wait at least 20 milliseconds you will not get any kind of a change out to the servo so on that code where we we're burning the logo into the thermal paper basically that code moved waited like 20 milliseconds waited like another 10 milliseconds and then turned on the laser and for like 10 milliseconds that burned the dot and then turned off the laser and went through and got the next vector but so if you update the servos you know 500 times a second only every 10 of those is going to make a difference anyway so that turns the laser on and so right now once this code executes because you've touched the screen the servos will be skewing slewing to the point that corresponds to your touch and the laser will be on and the next thing we need to do is turn it off so this is the part of the code where um, there's no points touched at all and so we for the servo stuff we just say turn the laser off so we write that port to zero uh, the that is hooked up to the gate of a n-type FET 
and it simply pulls the it allows the ground of the laser to float when that's high or when it's low and when it's high it pulls the ground to ground and turns the laser on and then just for kicks we return the servo to 1500 and 1500 plus our offsets which puts it back in the center so that's how simple it was to modify this standard demo code to become this laser demo okay we'll walk through the connections on this uh, setup like any good prototype it's a mess of flying leads and wires but that's all right you knew what you're coming for okay so this is the SD card over here that's not really used in the laser shark demo but it is used in the FTDI demo code that we started from so I just left it in place and so this hooked up with spy just uh, I think it's data in data out mostly MISO clock and chip select and 3.3 volts orange and ground then then this next bank of wires this bank right here goes over to this uh, adapter board for the FTDI this adapter board uh, simply goes from um, the 30 pin connector of the FTDI that's very compact and low profile for production applications and it gets it out here to the uh, 10th inch center connected mudo type headers it has labels on there and it has some resistors for balance and everything so that's again just spy and some uh, I think there's some control and interrupt lines in there chip select and something like that and then as far as the uh, actual servos are involved there's uh, like pan tilt and the laser enable so I'll adjust the camera and I'll look at those okay so here's the servo connection so that the two PWMs that come from the servo library just go through this connector block and end up on the white wires. This black wire is ground to the Seeduino and also goes to the new black wires on the servos and it also goes to the black wire on the external bench supply. And then the red wire simply goes straight through the external bench supply. These servos are fairly high torque so they're set at 5 volts and um, like right here idling they're taking about 200 milliamps and when they move it can get up to you know into I don't know half an amp or something so it takes a fairly beefy 5 volt supply to run the servos and here is the way the laser is turned on and off the uh, power to the laser comes from a supply here at 7 volts and it current limits about an amp and a half and then the ground from the laser comes here the ground is controlled by this tiny little FET here which is air soldered across those two pins and then the ground to the uh, Seeduino is this black wire here and then this the control lead is here that's the signal the GPIO from the Seeduino that tells it to do it and then the ground from the power supply the laser power supply is connected to that center pin so basically when this purple pin goes high that FET turns on and it shorts the ground of the power supply to the ground of the laser when this purple pin goes low the FET turns off one leg is still soldered to the power supply of the laser the other leg since it's just connected to the FET goes free and it floats that turns the laser off as far as mechanical stuff goes just basically a wood frame to hold everything steady and there's these uh, robot servos are called they're fairly high torque and metal gears my main goal with those wasn't to be super strong. I was hoping to get some that were fairly precise because we were having trouble with... We started with uh, with something with these kind of uh, micro servos here and this had so much more slop that we put that aside. So we went with these uh, robot servos and they, they seem to be a lot more precise although they're not really precise enough to draw um, you know super precise with the laser and then the shark is uh, simply mounted on there it's got a hole in its head probably similar to me too and then the laser stuffed inside there you know the laser is supposed to have that blacks the heat sink so you probably wouldn't want it to run it a long time with the shark in there before things started getting hot and so the mechanical is pretty simple just a couple of uh, robot servos I mounted a block of wood the uh, Eve touchscreen to get the touch control and um, the adapter board to go between the EVE and the Seeduino and the Seeduino fairly fairly simple setup thank you for watching this video and may all your dreams about sharks with laser beams come true <laughs> That's good.